When you heard about the wormhole being a central part, was your, were you enthusiastic? You're like, yes, I always wanted to write a movie about wormholes, or was it, oh no, not those wormholes again? <laughs> it, it, it was a challenge, and Kip and I talked about it. Wormholes, though, though not faithfully recreated, uh, have been recreated several times, but probably most memorably in, in, in um, their Carl Sagan, Linda Ope's collaboration on Contact. Um, they are, you know, sort of inversely proportional in terms of their frequency in science fiction film versus their frequency in the actual observable universe. <laughs> so we had a challenge of trying to find a version of a wormhole that f had a new um, sensation to it. And I think that was the idea. In, in Kip's original treatment, and it was one that we stuck with for the first couple drafts of the script, uh, there was a lovely idea that the wormhole was actually quite narrow, that the mouth of it was too narrow for the spaceship, and so the spaceship had to be, um, had to be essentially uh, modular so that it could be fed through the wormhole. And it made for this very exciting sort of claustrophobic. The wormhole ate the spaceship from the inside. Wow. Um, uh, which I spent a solid month trying to uh, imagine and then remembered that my job was simply to write the wormhole <laughs> eats the spaceship from the inside and let Chris figure it out with Paul. Um, and we love that, but it, it, it ultimately, and you see the final sequence, what it gave you in terms of claustrophobia and a tactility to the experience, it lost in grandeur and that sense of crossing some fantastic threshold.